Praise the Lord, friends. I am so glad that you are connected with us today. I am finishing up my series on Jesus plus nothing. We've been teaching from the book of Galatians. Thank God for the gospel. Thank God for the grace of God. Did you know if you get a revelation of grace, it will completely change your life. You know, I was born again when I was eight years old, baptized in the Holy Spirit, called to preach when I was 14, started pastoring when I was just 23, turned 24 really quick after I started. But I did not get a revelation of grace until I was 30 years old in 1994. i have been pastoring for over six years. And did you know when I got a revelation of grace, it completely changed my life. And it changed how I related to my wife. My wife said I was terrible to live with before I got a revelation of grace. And did you know what? Grace has freed me. Grace has helped me. My wife says that my children would probably not even be serving God today if I hadn't got a revelation of grace. But thank God I got a revelation of grace when my oldest son Aaron was just six years old. Andrew would have been four. Peter would have been two. And you know what? It absolutely changed my life, changed my ministry. You know, before I got a revelation of grace, about 90% of what I preached on is what we need to do, and about 10% of what I preached on is what Jesus did. But since I've got a revelation of grace, about 90% of what I preach is about what Jesus has done, and about 10% of what I preach is about what we need to do in response. You see, there's two really balancing messages in the New Testament. They are the message of grace and faith. There's two outstanding things, and grace is really talking about what Jesus has done for us, what God did for us in the person of Jesus when he died and rose again. And faith is taught, and that's the gospel. Faith is talking about our positive response to the gospel. You see, when you get a revelation of grace, it won't be a problem for you to walk in faith. But if you try to teach faith, with, without understanding grace, what will happen is it will cause people to get into works or performance. Now you can get on either side of this thing and be messed up. You can get over here and just teach grace to the point that it's sovereignty to where there's no aspect of you believing and acting on the word of God, and, and that's crazy. Or you can get over here and teach faith to where it's works, to where it's all about you and not about Jesus, and, and that leads people to death. But you know what people really need to know is there is perfect balance of grace and faith. And, and so grace is what God did for us in the person of Jesus when he died and rose again. And grace is about God, and faith is about our positive response to the gospel, just believing in Jesus. Belie Jesus is the embodiment of grace. If you wanted to see grace, you just look at Jesus, because Jesus demonstrated grace. You know, Jesus loved sinners. Jesus loved those who were rejected by religion. He, he loved people who were outcast. And, and Jesus really built his ministry with people who were outcasts from society. And so thank God for the grace of God. Now, when we went through Galatians, we saw a number of things. First of all, we saw in chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him who called you into the grace of Christ to another gospel. To move away from grace is to move away from Jesus. Again, Jesus is the embodiment of grace. So we need the grace of God. Then we saw in chapter 3, verse 2, Paul said, I have a question. I want to ask you a question. How did you get saved? Did you get saved by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And the answer is obvious, by faith, by, by the hearing of faith. We heard the grace of God and believed in it. And, and so he says, I got another question. Are, are, are you who, who, who were, you know, started by the Spirit, who began in the Spirit, are you made perfect by the flesh? Is it your performance? Is it your works? He says, he that ministers to you, the Spirit, and works miracles, how does he do it? Does he do it by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? And the answer is obvious. It's by faith in Jesus. So if you see somebody who, who's ministering and doing a great job, you know, they're doing it by the grace, by faith in Jesus. And, and what he says is really everything from the beginning of your Christian life to the end of your ministry, to the end of your life here on earth, is done by grace through faith. And, and we really need both of these aspects. So, so we went on, and then in Galatians 5, uh, Paul said, I want you to stand fast in the freedom and the liberty that you've been given in Christ. 
You know, where Christ has made us free. I tell you that if, if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Jesus plus circumcision equals nothing. He goes on to say this. He says, if a man is circumcised, he's a debtor to the whole law. The problem with adding circumcision to Jesus or law keeping to Jesus is you've got to keep the whole thing. And you know what? Nobody's ever kept the law. You remember the rich young ruler that came to Jesus? I think it's found in Mark chapter 10, but it's in the Gospels. This rich young guy, ruler, comes to Jesus and he said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, well, what did Moses say? And he said, I've done these things from my youth up. Jesus said, well, you lack one thing. He, sa he said, well, what is that? And Jesus said, go sell your goods and give it to the poor and come and follow me. Just, just trust me. And, and he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. Well, really, his possessions had him. Now, he said he'd kept the whole lot, not only the Big Ten, the Ten Commandments, but the 620 that go with them. And nobody's ever kept all those things yet. Nobody has ever kept the entire law, period, except for the person of Jesus. OK, the law wasn't made so you could keep it. The law was made so you'd break it. So you'd give up and trust Jesus. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So when Jesus was telling him, you lack one thing, what Jesus was really saying to this man, Jesus was saying to this man that the first commandment of all is you shall have no other gods before me. He's saying he's kept all hundred, big 10 and 620 go with him. He, 630, Jesus said, no, you haven't even kept number one. And, 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 you know, and Jesus does a lot of teaching. He says, the law says, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you, if you look on a woman, you can read this in Matthew chapter 5, to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. The law says you shall not murder, but I tell you, if you call your brother a fool, you're in danger of the hell fire. Now, listen, we all make mistakes. You, you know what? We, we, in other words, Jesus is saying it's not by your performance. Jesus wasn't adding to the law. Jesus was saying, listen, law keeping doesn't cut it. It's faith in God. And you need to have an ongoing relationship with Jesus, a relationship of love. Now, Jesus set us free, really, to live the free life. It, and that's what he talks about in Galatians chapter 5. He, he says this in verse 4, Christ became of no effect to you. Whoever you justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. You're going to miss out on the benefits of being a believer if you don't quit trusting yourself, if you don't trust, quit trusting your performance and just trust Jesus. So, so Christ set us free to live the free life. You're free from the law. You're free from religion, you're free to live, love, and serve through Jesus. Amen? So the grace life is the free life. Amen? The grace life is the fruitful life. He goes on and talks about this in Galatians chapter 5. This is where we left off in our program yesterday, in our broadcast yesterday. So he says this in Galatians 5 verse 16, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would. In other words, you can't just let your flesh have its way. We're not talking about a free for all. We're not talking about letting your flesh run rampant. No, he says, but if you're led of the spirit, you're not under the law. It's not by the works of the law. It's not the law that keeps your flesh in check. It's the spirit of Christ that's in you. He says, now, the works of the flesh are revealed, which are these, adultery, sex outside of marriage when you're married, fornication, sex outside of marriage when you're not married, uncleanliness, all kinds of sexual sins, lasciviousness, just letting your flesh have anything it wants, idolatry, putting something above Jesus, witchcraft, the Bible says covetousness is idolatry in Colossians chapter 3, I believe it's verse 4, maybe verse 5, right down through there. He says witchcraft, okay, hatred. Contention, variance, which is talking about contention. Some people are so contentious. That's the work of the flesh. Emulation, striving to get ahead at the expense of someone else. Wrath, determined lasting anger. Strife. You know, the Bible says where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. That's the end of James chapter 3. Sedition, having your own little cliques. Heresies, you know, heresy, not teaching the truth about Christ and who he is envyings, you know, murderers. A lot of people, you know, there's people that struggle with envy. You know, I, I know one guy who, who's a prophet running around calling another person a false prophet. And the problem with him, he's just jealous, envy, murder, 
murder. You know, the Bible says he that hates his brother in 1 John 3 about verse 14 is a murderer. Drunkenness, just letting your flesh have its way. Reveling, having all these wild flesh parties, just, just letting the flesh go. You know, we are not condoning the flesh life. The spirit life is a fruitful life. Amen. The, the grace life is a fruitful life. And it's the fruit of the spirit that helps you to overcome the flesh. He says, and such like, anything that's like that. One father had a teenage son and said, where do you see that in the Bible, Dad, that I can't do this? He said, it's right here, such like. Of the which thing I tell you before, I've told you in the time past, they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, there's different aspects, ways that you can look at this. See, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And if you want to operate in righteousness, peace, and the joy of the Holy Ghost, don't let your flesh have its way. Okay, now he says the fruit, the works of the Spirit. This is the physical manifestation of the flesh. The fruit of the Spirit is this, love. The number one fruit of the Spirit is love. All the other fruit flow forth from love. Joy. You see, I've never seen somebody be in strife and be in joy at the same time. So when you let love rule and you get out of strife, joy is the natural result, right? Joy is the, actually the fruit of faith when you have faith in God. Peace. Peace is the fruit of the Spirit. Let the peace of God rule your heart to which you're called. The Bible says, that's in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Long-suffering. What's long-suffering? It's suffering long and still being patient with people. That's part of it, right? Being patient with people. Gentleness. Gentleness. David said, thy gentleness has made me great. A person who's a Spirit-ruled, Spirit-led person will be will let gentleness rule their life. I've got a lot more gentle than I used to be. Goodness, I still need some work in that area. Goodness, the goodness of God. God is a good God and God lives in you. So you need to let his goodness throw, flow through you. Faith, get this, faith is a fruit of the spirit. You don't need more faith. You have the exact same faith as Jesus. You have the spirit, the exact same spirit of Jesus. Read Romans chapter eight, verse nine through verse 11. That will show you that. So you have the faith of Jesus in you. You need to learn how to release the faith that you've been given. You see, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith. I think it's in Luke chapter 18. And Jesus said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And he talked about how faith is our servant. So you have the faith of Jesus in your spirit. And when you have faith, then you can release that faith and operate in faith. Now he says meekness. What is meekness? Meekness is seeing yourself the way God sees you. Moses wrote that he was the meekest man in all the earth. I think it's Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. And Moses wrote it. Meekness. It, it's seeing yourself the way God sees you. It's not this false humility. It, it's a true humility from understanding who God made you to be and what God made you to be. Temperance or self-control. You need to keep yourself under control. Right Against such, he says, there is no law, the fruit of the Spirit. So are we, you can look at this and say, is this flesh or is this Spirit? Judge it. By their fruit, Jesus said, you shall know them. Right? And this is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. If you let the fruit of the Spirit flow, you will walk, the fruit of the Spirit is greater than the works of the flesh. You will overcome the flesh through the fruit of the Spirit. They who are Christ have crucified the flesh, the outward man, with its afflictions and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. See, you've been made alive in the Spirit. You have the Spirit of Christ in you. You have the exact same Spirit of Jesus. So mortify your members on earth. Put to death. You know, Paul talks about that. He says this in Romans 8, 11, If the Spirit of Him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, He will quicken your mortal body by His Spirit that dwells in you. He says, Therefore, brethren, in verse 12, we are no longer debtors to the flesh. In other words, because you have the Spirit of Christ, you don't owe the flesh anything. But he says, If you through the Spirit mortify, he goes on to say that, the, the deeds of the body, the flesh, you shall live. So let the Spirit flow, because greater is He that's in you than he that's in the world, because the Spirit of Christ in you is greater than the flesh. Let the Spirit rule. He says, let us not be desire of vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another. So, so let the Spirit, Christ lives in you, let Him live through you. You see, the grace life 
is a free life. You're free from the law. You're free from religion. You're free to love. You're free to serve. You're, the, the grace life is a, is a fruitful life. Let the fruit of the Spirit rule your life. And finally, he says this in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, clear through the chapter. The grace life is an empowered life. Now, let's talk about the first part of empowerment. The first part of empowerment is forgiveness. Let's read Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through 5. Brethren, if any man is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill all the law of Christ. If you're such a mature person, the way that you show your maturity is by helping the people who are weak in an area. Not by being puffed up, not by being proud, not by having a bad attitude, but by helping them. If, if you're overtaken in a fault, right, then you go help them. That's what Romans 15, 1 through verse 5 or so talks about these same things. He says, for if a man thinks himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. Really, if you're lifted up in pride, you're only deceiving yourself. But let this man provoke his own work. Every man prove his own work, and he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. So we are free to forgive. Hallelujah. If someone is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, you restore that person. Right in a spirit of weakness and consider yourself lest you be tempted. You go help your brother in the area where he's challenged. Amen? So we're empowered through forgiveness. Forgiveness is freeing. You know, Jesus talked about faith. And he said, have faith in God. For very last end to you, this is in Mark 11, 22 to verse 24. Whosoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, shall not doubt his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, shall have whatsoever he says. So have faith in God and keep speaking the word. And he says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, verse 24, Mark 11, 24. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. But then he goes on and said, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any. You see, love makes faith work. And if you want your faith to work, you need to let the love of God flow. You need to forgive your brothers. If you have any little thing against anyone, you need to let it go. Let it go. It's not worth all. I had somebody write a letter about some minister that had wronged them. And they were talking about stuff this over a year ago. It really wasn't a big deal. I said, listen, I asked my secretary, please write them a note and say, let it go. Let it go. Let God deal with it. You let it go. God can deal with those things. Let them go. Okay? Now, in verse 6 through 10, sometimes there are things that you need to deal with. Okay? But other times there's things you need to just let go. And so I encourage this person, let it go. Galatians 6, verse 6 through verse, verse 10, listen to what he says. Not only are you free to forgive, not only are you empowered to forgive, but you're empowered to give. Let who, him who's taught in the word communicate to him who teaches in all good things. You can give not only finances. You know, you can, you can share the fruit of your garden. You could give somebody a car. You could give somebody a ride. You could just, you know, be kind. There's different ways to give. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Don't, don't be lying to yourself. Whatever you're sowing, you're going to have a harvest. For he who sows to his flesh, you, you sow to the fruit of the flesh. What? The works of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, uncleanliness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, emulation, strife, envy, heresies, right? Revelings and such like. You sow to the works of the flesh and you're going to have a harvest you're not going to like. So do not sow to the flesh. You, some of you need to pray that you have a crop failure, you know? And, and he says, he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption or death. The flesh is going to produce death. But he that sows to the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, right? shall reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing. He's still talking about giving. For in due season we shall reap if you don't faint. You know, you keep sowing. There's a day that your harvest is coming. Harvest is coming. This is a word for somebody. You've been sowing to the Spirit. You've been sowing good things. You've been sowing financially. You've been diligent. You've been faithful. And harvest is coming to you. You're going to have a good, good harvest and it's not far away. Praise God. He says, 
He says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we do not faint. Don't, don't give up before your harvest. As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good to all men. Paul says, listen, let us be good to everybody. Just be good to everybody. Be good to everyone. Do good to all men, especially to those who are of the household of faith. You know, I was at the restaurant the other night, and there's a man that came and sat down across from Barbara and I. We were eating. We'd been on a long journey. We just got home from our trip. And, and you know, we, were, we just stopped by the restaurant to grab something on the way to the house after being traveling over half a day. And, and this man came in and sat down. I could tell he was a hard-working man, tell different things. And Jesus said, I want you to buy that man his meal. Now, I don't, I don't know, you know, who the man is. I don't even know his name. I don't know what he does. I don't know when he, he was all by himself. I just know the Lord said, you buy his meal. So I had the waitress get the check, bring it to me. I paid it. You know, a, a, a few days later, we were in the same restaurant. I paid for his, gave the, gave the you know, waitress a nice trip, a tip I paid for mine, gave the, my waitress a nice tip. And, and we were in the same restaurant. Somebody came and said, hey, the owner of the restaurant bought your meal. Now, the owner wasn't there. He didn't know that we did that unless somebody told him. But you know what? You sow, if you sow, if you're good to other people, it will come back to you. You know, the Bible says here, be good to all men, especially to those that are of the household of faith. You know, I have lived and I try to be right to people. I try to do good to people. And you know, good comes back to me. He said, you see how long a letter I've written to you with my own hand. As many desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution. And so, for the cross of Christ. Now, he says the grace life is the free life. And, and, and the free life is an empowered life. We're empowered to forgive. We're empowered to give. And then we're empowered to, to minister to other people and rest in the love of God. He's talking about rest in the love of God. He, he talks about this. He says, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. I'm in Galatians 6, verse 12. They constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. Again, no one has kept the law except for Jesus. The law wasn't made so that you should keep it. The law was made so that you would turn your heart to Jesus and say, Jesus, I can't do this and believe on Jesus. He, the, the Bible says that Galatians 3 in there, you read it. It says that the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But he says, you desire, we desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. He says, there, there are those who are trying to get you circumcised to keep the law. They are trying to keep the law, but, and they desire to have you circumcised. They're trying to get another notch in their gun, so to speak, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory. Paul says, I'm not going to glory in you. I'm not going to glory in the people that follow me. I am going to glory in the cross of Jesus by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Remember when we talked in Galatians 2 verse 20 when Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We said there's four, four deaths that need to take place. Number one, we need to die to what? We need to die to sin. Number two, Romans 6 talks about that. We need to die to the law. That's what Galatians 2 verse 16 to verse 22 is or 21 is talking about dying to the law. Number three, we need to die to ourself. The Bible talks about that. Jesus said, if you don't take up your cross and follow me, you won't be mine. Praise God. So we need to die to ourselves. But number four, we need to die to the world. He says, God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of Jesus, by which the world is crucified to me and I to the world. The world has died to me. In other words, the world doesn't have the power over me, doesn't have the hold on, on me. It's not, doesn't, just, it's not pulling me like it once did. For he says, in Christ Jesus, Galatians 6, verse 15, neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. What matters in Christ is that you're born again, is that you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and that you are completely trusting Jesus and not your performance. As many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Peace to you, mercy to you, peace to Israel, mercy to Israel. You know what? You need to speak good of Israel and bless Israel because you see that comes back to you. He says, from this point, 
Let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body. I've been persecuted for the gospel, for the message of Jesus, for the message of grace, the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. I want to thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. Tell your friends about this broadcast. We're running this time. You know what? Every weekday, praise God. So tell your friends about this broadcast. We're live streaming Monday to Thursday. Actually, Sunday we have our church services and we live stream those and then Wednesday night and then Monday to Thursday at 11 a.m. But then we have our broadcast Monday to Friday at the same time. So invite your friends to be a part of this broadcast. If you have never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity right now. Just pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that you raised him from the dead. And, and Heavenly Father, I believe that you made Jesus Lord. Right now, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. And I ask you to come live your life in me. Jesus, as you give me the strength, I will live for you. It's in your name that I pray. If you prayed that prayer, I invite you to give us a call. Tell your friends, I've made Jesus my Lord. Friends, if you'd like to have this series, Jesus Plus Nothing, just give us a call today. We have it for a special gift to help us with the cost of this broadcast. I also want to say a great big thank you to our partners for helping us get this message of grace and faith out to the world. God bless you. If you want to be a partner, just give us a call. Blessings. Everyone needs a savior. Everyone needs Jesus. In this series, you will come to understand that Jesus is the only way for anyone to be justified. His sacrifice completely paid for all of our sin, past, present, and future. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. You can get it today for $19 with free shipping. Call 719-418-4000 or visit LawsonPurdue.com. We just wanna say a very special thank you to all of our partners. We're taking the Word of God around the world. We hear weekly from countries all over the world, from the Middle East, from Asia, from Europe, from Africa, from South America, from Mexico. Praise God, our partners are helping us share the Word. And if you wanna become a partner, just give us a call today. We would love to hear from you. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast is made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000 or go to LawsonPurdue.com or write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.